Greetings, everybody. This is Jeff Scott. It is February 9th, 2020, and this is my top-down review. Spoiler alert, it's here. The person add-on is here. I'm using it today, and it will be commercially available sometime by the end of this week, and I will be sending out information soon, hopefully about a Thursday um, evening webinar where I'll introduce it as, as well as the pricing and availability. Very exciting. I think you'll find the tool to take HGSI to another level in stock picking. Last week, I commented that I was not as concerned about coronavirus as the world seemed to be. We've still had over 10,000 deaths related to influenza in this country this season. We've had one American die, and that person died in um, China. It is a big public health problem. It will probably impact on the economies of the world as the Chinese economy is likely to take a hit. But like SARS and MERS and others before it, they have a way of burning themselves out. So I'm still not throwing in the towel. However, I do think the longer this goes on, the more concerning it is, especially for travel stocks, cruise ships, etc. And in addition, um, the 14 day um, incubation period for patients or people that were exposed before we were isolating um, expires this weekend. So we may see a big jump up on Monday reports, and hopefully that will be the peak because people have been in isolation now after exposure. Um, still be interesting to see. Now, last weekend, my prophecy came true because the Chinese, not shockingly, came in and injected liquidity into their markets. The markets hadn't been open since January 23rd, and Monday we really popped. We were also very oversold, and if you remember from last week's recording, I talked about I'd expect a, a, a reversal within the next day or so. Uh, well, we reversed. We into, now we're into a double top. Now what happens? My email address is hgsidoc at gmail.com. Um, I welcome positive and negative criticism about my comments regarding the market, not about my grunts and sniffling, etc. cetera. Um, side note, those who've been following me know that I've had a, a little tit, tist, tryst with a um, video follower. Uh, this is for educational purposes only. Any recommendation in the spirit of education, not investment advice. I am a doctor, not a broker. I am independent. I have paid for all the tools. Um, I'll have paid more for the John Person add-on than anybody else because I paid for um, the development internally inside of George's system prior to getting John to um, give the real code. Um, I wanted to create something so that I could demonstrate the power of HGSI to John, and I have succeeded. He's excited. Um, trading involves risk, and you and your loan are solely responsible for any decisions that you make. Um, I title my education and everything I do to be your own guru. I don't for a second suggest that I did this on my own. Yeah, I've got a few things that I've probably made up along the way, but in reality, I started by reading How to Make Money in Stocks by William O'Neill. CanSlim was the starting approach. Ian Woodward in the picture here took O'Neill stuff, I think made it better. And with George Roberts of HGSI created a software tool to help automate processes or to make it much easier to use. Ron Brown is a other is the other one of the other Uber users of HGSI. He had, had, a, approaches the market using volume spread analysis. Different approach than I do, but it shows the power of the tool. It is adaptable to however your trading style is. Morales and Catcher, money managers for O'Neill, they helped me by introducing new techniques such as um, pocket pivots and viable gap ups, but also talked about how Cancelin may not be a, what's working anymore and how to grow beyond Cancelin. Down the lower left hand corner is my good friend George Lee, Western Canadian, great trader, great presenter, and hopefully sometime this year we'll get to at least share something online, if not live together. Lower right-hand corner, just calling out Cigar from Superior Profit. He developed some tools. Um, you know, I use them during the day, understanding rotation of the market. It's another way of looking at stocks. I'm not a charting platform. 
Um, and then he's got some great indicators that go into TradeStation and, th and, and, and Metastock, and I use the TradeStation ones daily. Van Tharp, the king of position size and money management. And I think everybody knows this guy here, John Person. John and I have, um, have grown to become friends um, over the last many years since I moved to Palm Beach. I was one of his first customers buying his um, lifetime package on both uh, Trade Navigator Genesis and on um, TradeStation. Uh, John is uh, a special person. I mean, he's obviously very bright. He's been trading as long as I've been a doctor. He owned his own brokerage. He started out on the op futures options exchanges. Um, and he's developed his own way of doing things. And much of what I do, especially of late, I've learned from him, especially after you get a list of stocks, how do you actually trade them? He's got some great books. And I use his indicators in every platform, which is why I'm so excited that they are coming into HGSI. Now, I own a lot of tools, and I've actually updated this slide because I hadn't updated it in a long time. I use TradeStation and Thinkorswim every day. Even if you come into my office at work, just don't tell my, 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 my partners. Um, they'll be on my computers. By the way, they know what I'm doing in my office at work. Um, and on those TradeStation and Thinkorswim platform, I use a number of John's stuff. I used to use Genesis a whole lot more. You know, reality is Genesis is probably one of the best platforms out there, but it doesn't hook up with the brokerage that I use. And um, I've sort of gone beyond it. It's stable. Yeah, maybe I should go back and revisit it someday. I pay for it, so I should look. I do my, analy my, my analysis in HGSI and EdgeRater. I'm going to show you a couple of Dr. K tools. Um, got to know him over the last couple of months, and he just updated one of his tool sets for Thinkorswim. And I think we may be getting to the point where we can start to um, look beyond the existing seasonality programs that many of us use and pay for monthly. And then superiorprofit.com, the Q and Vital Tools. Um, HGSI, the website here, I have no financial relationship. I have a big personal relationship. I have an incentive to keep them going because I call George up and he adds things to the program that we all get access to from time to time. Plus, I use it to make a lot of money. Why would I want to do anything but make sure he's successful? There is a free 30-day trial. I'm not sure that that makes a whole lot of sense. He doesn't even take his credit card, your credit cards. Um, but I will tell you, there is a learning curve. Um, I have some older videos to help people. And along with the launch of the John Person add-on, I'm going to be doing a whole new series of education about how to use HGSI and how to incorporate the, the, the John Person add-on. Um, I'm doing this because we're going to introduce this to the, the Pug Group, which is the person user group and a number of trade station, other platform users, and hope to entice them to come into HGSI as well. Under investing strategies, you'll see hundreds of videos by me, Ron Brown, and others. Now, you always have to ask, where are we in the market? I can tell you, as somebody who's been trading for a long time, when you see this little green circle by, you kind of know it because the market's been going sort of sideways for a period of time. And then you start seeing breakouts and breakouts that don't fail. And you start to notice that the entire market starts to feel like it's going up. You start to get excited, your heart's racing, and then you start to make a lot of money. We are not there right now, folks. There is stage three, which is uncertainty. Uncertainty is part of where we've been the last quite some time because, you know, are we going higher? Are we going lower? There's a lot of question. There's a lot of stocks that might be in trading patterns, ultimately going sideways. And then you get to kind of how I felt Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, um, where two weeks ago, everything I had earnings were positive and the stocks popped. This week, they sort of dropped. And because of some good trades, I stayed up. I made money on the week, but this was a much tougher week. I, I continue to sense that we've got a correction coming. I know John feels the same way. We talked about it yesterday, but you know, it's not here yet, but I think there's some signals that we should probably pay attention to. 
Now, if I think a correction is coming, then I better be raising cash, smaller positions, starting to sell some premium way out of the money and start looking at things on the, the downside. Now, if the biggest mistake I've made over the last three to five years is overplaying my concerns to the downside. Um, maybe it's because I lived through 2008 and 2009 and I lived to, to trade again. Um, and I don't want to watch my portfolio take that kind of a hit. But you know, my, my portfolio would be a lot more successful if I didn't buy insurance. Then again, I've got life insurance. I used to have disability insurance. I got car insurance. I never want to use those. So um, I have started to take insurance. What does that mean? It means when Amazon is sitting at 2080 and my cost basis is 450 and I have a lot of it, I can start looking at buying calls, say 2025, 2050 calls that are expensive, but I can sell... I mean, I can look at 2025 puts rather. I can sell calls at the 2150, 2200. I can sell puts at the 1800, 1900. And I could cushion a couple hundred drop in Amazon. Well, I've done that. I can buy cheap calls on my Bank of America, or cheap puts rather, on my Bank of America position, which I've got it about, I own it from about $6 up. I can buy puts on my Apple, which I've done. So I've done a number of things on some of my bigger long-term positions, and I've also bought some VXX, and I've got a list of Contra ETFs. I haven't pulled the trigger on most of those things yet, just protected some of my profits. Now, Friday, like last Friday, was another sea of red, although you could see in consumer staples some green. You can see in real estate some green, and I would suspect you could see a little bit of green as well in utilities. Those are defensive plays. And that should tell you a little bit of where the market was running. We had another head fake in energy where it looked like energy was leading, but energy kind of limped in to the weekend. Now, let's just jump out of this into my think or swim. Um, a couple of notes. I do use a lot of slides. And the reason why I use the slides is I can go faster. But every slide I use represents a chart view that I took sometime this weekend. Um, but I like jumping into think or swim because... As much as you might feel, I keep doing weekly, I want daily, some doom and gloom, um, it is important to remember that right now we are sitting at um, right off of all-time highs. And let me talk about that. I mean, markets have got to fall from somewhere, but maybe they don't fall from all-time highs. So here is the E-minis. For the, the thinkorswim charts and the trade station charts, I'm going to be using futures because I think they tell me more of the story because they capture some of the things that happen after night. Um, here's Friday. Friday was a down day. Friday, it, that's an ugly looking candle. Now notice that we had the high for the entire sheet, which is a year, on Thursday. So we are off the high. We're still above the 17, the 50, and the 200-day moving average. Volume was a little greater on Friday than it was on Thursday, but it was still lower than earlier in the week. If I want to keep a bullish tone here, I probably can, but you know we have a tendency of pulling back at least to the 17 and probably to the 50, and you know that might be a, a bearish target right now. If we are at 30... 323 and it's 33 3227 that's only about a three to four percent drop to get down to the 50-day moving average not out of the question but it, is this a bearish chart or a bullish chart that's a bearish candle but it's a very bullish chart if i look at the nasdaq futures same exact story except we hit the the all-time high earlier in the day on Friday before we rolled over. Um, if I look at the Dow futures, let me make this look the same as the other with duration. Um, hit the high on Thursday. Again, a little closer to the 17, a little bit more choppier than the others. But how is this not, let me make sure this is a year. How is this not a, a bullish long-term trend. I don't know what I did here. I should still be getting a year's worth of data. 
There I am. Choppier than the others. Uh, if you think why, it's got a lot of energy and other things. Now, the Russell kind of looks a little bit like the Dow here, but notice the Russell hasn't made up its peak for quite some time. And as I'll show you on the weekly charts, it hasn't taken out its all-time high. It's pulled down to the 50, and that might be what we've got coming across the market. The VIX pulled into the 200-day moving average, still in the middle of its range. A rising VIX is usually bad for the stock market. A falling VIX is a great time to go out and play and buy stocks. Right now, it looks like it's rising. And then the dollar really spiked, I think, on coronavirus and other fears. And that's not good for the metals, despite um, some of the um, market fears. All right, hold on one sec. I go let my dog in. Let me see if I can pause this. I always get afraid of pausing this because I've screwed up a few times. Here to resume. All right, I think it's working now. That's interesting. Um, all right, so let's go back and finish what I was doing. Sorry about that if I'm a little confused. I think we were mentioning the VIX. And I just wanted to finish on the, uh, the dollar here. Um, the dollar is really spiking here, and that's not good for the metals. Um, I was making a comment that both John and I love our dogs. His dog is a baby. My dog's an, a grandpa, and they're needy. <laughs> so I, occasionally he'll, I'll get called away to do something with the dog. All right, so there's the daily futures. And if I want to look at the weekly futures, let me blow this up. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, we'll try a different way. Sorry about that. And so on the weekly futures, you could see how the top three, the E-minis, the NASDAQs, the Dow, have been in a nice uptrend. That here is the prior high 18 months ago or so on the Russell, which we have not taken out. The VIX being sideways, it's during these spikes that the market sells off. You can kind of correlate those above. And the dollar is sort of sideways, but is it breaking out? We'll see. Now, I like to look at the same underlyings every week to get a sense of what the market is doing. Rates tick higher at, and the 210 spread widened. So here's a 10-year picked up, the 30-year picked up. They're certainly low. I'd love to see them come a little bit higher. But the more important thing is the, the spread. It's hard to see here with this coloring actually ticked up a little bit. When the spread gets closer to this pink line, that they start talking on CNBC about recessions. I saw an interesting correlation this weekend about how low, the, the, a lot of people are scared about low unemployment. Because when unemployment picks up, it usually means a recession and that the markets are in trouble. Okay, I guess in recessions, unemployment gets higher, but I don't think low unemployment alone triggers a recession. Now, the AD lines bounced on the week, as did the indexes, but they have not taken out their prior highs. Now, if they have lower highs, that could be a divergence and be something that's concerning in the market. Here is the NYSC. It's probably the easiest to see. And all the major ETFs picked up, and this light blue one here are bonds. And you can kind of see up here that the bonds are the only ones that actually tick down a bit. Um, as the rates went higher. Breath, we were oversold short-term last week, and both the stocks above the 200 and the 40 have bounced some. But more importantly, um, it's the short-term three-month new high, new low ratio, which bottomed beginning you know, last week and then moved up this week, showing the resolution of the oversold signal. Now, the McClellan has now got higher highs and not higher highs on the daily oscillator summation index or on the weekly. That remains concerning. We have clear diverge, bearish divergences on the McClellan. So all is not perfect. We are clearly getting closer and closer to a top. But I'm not saying that a top is in. I think a correction is overdue. And we'll show more evidence that suggests that. But you trade the market we have, not what you think we should have. 
our buckets. Now, last week, let me tell you, it's easy to trade extremes. Easy to trade extremes. Last Friday, I could look smart and say, over the weekend, we're going to reverse. That's because 30% of the stocks in the S&P 1500 were below the lower band. And then on Wednesday, we have this pattern where almost nobody's below the lower band. That means they all moved up. And now we're starting to approach on stocks above the upper band, 12%, which in itself is not a signal. And we ended the week kind of in a nothing pattern where it's a 50-50, no signal. Now, why is this important to me? And this is a slide that I'll update for my um, education this year. But whenever I see a preponderance of stocks below the S&P 1500, it usually correlates with bounces and reversal in the stock market. Now, that's in a bull market. We've been in a bull market for some time, a secular bull. In a bull market, when I get too extended to the top, I see sideways moves. I don't see draconian moves down. I suspect you have to flip this in a bear market, but I haven't been in one in a while. This is what a bear market looks like. This also correlates kind of with the low of the markets that we saw in the last bear, and this is October of 2008. And the only point of this slide is, yeah, I got excited by 30% of the stocks in the S&P 1500 um, being below the lower Bollinger Band, but in a bad market, in a bear, almost all the stocks are below the midline and you start to get 40%, 50%, 70%, 70% of stocks get to be below the Bollinger Band and then you get a massive recovery, but it can get oversold and more oversold. We had the Hindi fire on the NASDAQ on Friday. We're still working off a series of Hindis on both the NASDAQ and the NYSE. This does not mean anything except you haven't had a major correction without these firing. They're notoriously inaccurate. One out of four is correct. But when I see a, a flurry of them, I expect something to happen in the market. Market tone. Early in the week, we had a series of bullish kahunas here in blue. And we went out of a chop hindering the bears to a still a choppy market, but more bullish. So the market hasn't given it up. Giving it up is when you get this series of red kahunas and the market starts to turn red. That hasn't happened here yet. Sector strength, you'd expect with this market weakening that utilities, staples, and real estate improve, and they did. Canaries in the coal mine, looking at some of the big movers at extended fang list. Um, yes, I know Priceline's booking. It's already reflected in the chart. Um, big run-up starting in October. A pullback or a flag here to that eight-day exponential. Um, it's not over. It could certainly bounce here and go higher. How about the index that I created three weeks ago looking for signals of a market top? Well, <clears throat> we're going sideways. We're consolidating at the top. Um, that's not rolling over yet. I look for this as an early warning signal. You can notice that this red marks here represent the Hindenburg signals that fired. Case in point, back here in July, August of 2019, we had a series of Hindenburgs. The market pulled back some, but the market, you, you would have been happy had you stayed long. Might not have known that at the time, though. Now, from a news perspective this week, what popped out of me the most was the Powell testimony on Wednesday and on Tuesday, I suspect he's got testimony to Congress. We've got some CPI, retail sales. We've got some weekly jobless claims. But I think the market will be with bated breath to hear what he says. Is he leaning towards more cuts because of coronavirus? Or is he more likely still in a wait and see? I don't think anybody expects him to say he wants to tighten. I mean, there have been lots of signals coming out of other Fed heads of their lack of comfort with the inflation at the current rate. And you don't fix that um, without a, uh, or with a pay, with a rate increase. Lots of earnings this week. I'm gonna pay attention to some that I have. You need to know your earnings. I've got a fair number of holdings left. I have earnings, probably the big one for me on the week is gonna be Shopify which I believe is Thursday, is Wednesday, uh, Wednesday before the market opens. Yeah, Wednesday before the market opens. 
I've got a big position there. I'm going to talk about why I bought it. Maybe look at how I'm going to manage it while we're on this call. But as you could see, there's a large number of stocks, a lot of growth stocks with earnings this week. I would take my comment in the lower right hand corner to heart. It's a judgment call to hold stocks over earnings dates. It is bad judgment to not know when your stock's earnings date is scheduled. So a lot of thoughts here. Market was poised for a coronavirus dump, but was rescued last Sunday by a liquidity injection by the People's Republic when markets opened for the first time, I think since January 23rd. Index, I, I was reading on the Palatuma board where somebody was concerned indexes continue to go higher while so many stocks are failing. Um, add that to the Hindis, I think you see some underlying weakness. Fears appear to be increasing the coronavirus impact on China will affect worldwide growth, which were not diminished the fears despite very positive U.S. unemployment or employment on Friday. For me, I had a tougher week. I had a few hiccups with Verisign and Twillow, but my benchmark account was up another 6% of the week. It was like 479 Plus, I have another account that I said well, kept me over 30% on the year. The benchmark, I think, is at, is up now 560. On Wednesday, it was up over 600 on the year. So that's over 30% on that account alone. Compare that with the market indexes, as you can see here. That was a teaser. Um, my top and down, top down and bottoms up reviews confirm broad-based weakness and few viable setups. Despite the major indices only falling a half to 1% in the week, my gut says we have more downside to go, but not an imminent bear market. A 5% correction would not be the end of a bull. I continue to be probably more than I should be exposed on the long side. As I mentioned earlier, I used the run-up in Amazon to buy puts at a good price while selling out of the money calls and puts. I have called other positions similarly and raised some cash. I have a modest position in VIX. I'll be ready to pounce Monday based upon market direction. The person add-on, this will officially launch this week with indicators, scans, warehouse views, and smart groups. This is the first paid add-on to HGSI. That means you don't get it unless you pay for it. Now, it's sort of the opposite of Ron. Ron has a education program and gives his tools, at least earlier, to the people that um, have participate in his education. We're going to do it the other way, which is we're going to provide education on the tools, but charge you for the tools. We is the wrong word. I'll be doing the education and helping folks, but I don't have any financial incentive on this add-on. I don't want one. Um, it should be available to existing and new users by end of the week. And um, there'll be an introductory pricing since I'm not selling it to you, I'm just helping to promote it for, 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 because I'm a nice guy and I want to support both of my friends, George and John. Uh, I can't tell you what the price is. Um, I'm also planning a live webinar on Thursday the 13th, which I will um, put out some information probably in the emails and maybe a, a two-minute YouTube video for those that don't get my emails. Now, you might ask yourself, what are you going to get that's different? Uh, that'll be covered greater on Thursday. But, you know, to me, you know, John is a big fan of his pivots. And you get his pivot trading system, which he'll educate you on. Um, a lot of folks know I've been using some new signals that I've alluded to that might be John signals. They are John signals, the person buy signals. You get the high close and low close dojis, not just to tell you when you have them, but to scan for them. And you get what's probably one of his most powerful tools. And I'm going to show you how much money I've made because of this tool or how many stocks I've liked because of this tool over the last several months that I've spent more time with it. To me, it's called the power of bullish convergence. Yes, I stole convergence from John, but I'm looking at convergence being the marriage between things I've done historically and getting extra power from John's indicator. So John's indicator for buy and sell is this green and red thing here. Um, I have a band here which reflects when it's in a uptrend or downtrend. Although I have a tendency of calling John's indicator a buy-sell indicator, 
the more time I spend with it, it's more like a trend change indicator from a downtrend to an uptrend. And it can be done in multiple time frames. So people know that I like to find stocks in an uptrend that go sideways, pull into their moving averages, and I get a mobile breakup from a squeeze, a pocket pivot, and a kahuna. And this is a stock that I took about a week ago called Penny Mac Financial Services. I got attracted to it because of its earnings per share growth, which is huge compared to its multiple. It had a weekly HCD this week. And um, I got this thing called the Person Market Catcher. Now I'm going to show you the secret weapon very quickly on the next 10 charts or so. Notice how as we go across the sideways area here on price, the Perks Market Catcher is getting less and less negative. That's not the best example, but that was an example of bullish convergence. Price is going sideways. It's even better when price is coming down. And the person market catcher is going up. That added to my additional signals that I use historically, plus John's buy signal said buy. And I took a buy and I had a nice little move. Here is WR Berkeley Corp. Stocks in a downtrend. PMC is in an uptrend, is, is, is less of a downtrend, moving up, bullish convergence. And what do I have here on the 50? A mobile breakout from a squeeze. John's indicator fired. Bullish convergence. Kahuna's buy. Republic Services. Stock is coming down. PMC is less down. So you got bullish convergence. Mobile breakout from a squeeze. Person indicator on the 50 buy. Al Alterix, stock is coming down. PMC is getting less negative. And what do I have here? It's kind of mucky in here, so I didn't take the buy to over here. But I have a person buy signal, a mobile breakout, and a kahuna with bullish convergence. This weakening is talking about the right bar. It's not talking about where I took the buy. Into it. Pulling back. And what do I have? I've got bullish convergence here. And what do I see in here? I see a mobile breakout, a person buy signal, pocket pivot, and a kahuna. Shopify. Oh, this was probably my best trade of the last year. Sharp pullback on a stock that I wanted bad, but I couldn't, I could not buy the stock. It kept getting higher and higher and higher. I was looking for an entry. So pull back here to the 200. What do I have in there? I have a high jump firing here. I've got a reversal here. And on my other charts, I've got the bullish convergence. I took that trade for that reason. You had a mobile breakout from a squeeze come in as well. C, another stock that I own. Pull back to the 50. Notice my other signals are not, fi or the 200 here are not firing. But what do I have here? I've got, I think, a bullish convergence. Certainly, this is falling and this is going sideways. American Waterworks, price is going down, less and less negatively on the PMC. And we have a person buy signal, a kahuna, in a squeeze, the mobile breakout the next day, and a takeoff. Elf Beauty Supplies, sideways move in the stock market, mobile breakout from a squeeze, clearly bullish convergence on the PMC, and the stock takes off. Motorola Solutions, pulling back to support. Here's the buy day. Pocket pivot, kahuna, person buy signal, and bullish convergence. Medical Properties Trust, this is a boring REIT. Price coming down. And what do we have here? Off the 50 with bullish convergence. We have a pocket pivot. We have a mobile breakout. We have person signal and a mobile breakout from a squeeze. Uh, if you don't think there's power there, go find something else. Um, it is incredible 
when using, I use that bullish convergence as a filter to find the, the stock I want to buy today. I couldn't do that in HGSI before. So let's go take a quick top-down review. And this probably will go longer because I'm going to show you some of the things that I've been doing with the person add-on. The advantage of doing the live session is I can answer your questions as well. So let's go into TradeStation. I do the same thing every night and I like to look in here. Now, I actually don't show you much of the PMC, but I have it in TradeStation as well. Um, but I'm not going to bring that in today. I'm going to look at the indexes with the six points that I normally do. Obviously, it was a tough night or a tough Friday, I should say. Only a tough night if you're like my son and you're in Taiwan. Talking about a bad time to move to Asia. But. So, the E-minis are in a buy signal. Daily, weekly, and monthly. You've got green bars. Those are all bullish, despite any of my negative comments. Um, you're High jump is 85, so that's not a single. Your weekly bongo is green. So we had a very short-lived sell signal. We're now at the top of the channel here. So we got MACD divergences on the weekly. I look at this and I see an extended stock market, but one that could still go higher. But extended markets ultimately will correct. On the NASDAQ, we're at 94% on the high jump. Everything else is the same. Again, an extended marker getting closer to rarefied air. The Dow, only 79%. You can see the MACD divergences. And why do I say there's MACD divergence? Well, if I look at this high here on price and this high here on MACD, and then I look at a higher high and no MACD presence, that's a bearish divergence. Um, so that's a little bit bothersome. And notice the weekly bongo on the Dow. So the Dow's underperforming the NASDAQ and the E-minis. And if we look at the Russell, actually the bar turned red. So that's a little bit concerning. Um, you know, last week they looked worse. And if you get bad enough, you bounce. This week they look kind of neutral. And I do think the risk of a pullback is perhaps a little greater. Now, in HGSI, what I do here, and um, just another aside, I am thinking about doing a beginning investors in HGSI program. If I do it, it will be a waste for anybody that's a power trader to take. But it's going to be, I've got a lot of friends and colleagues at work and, and frankly relatives that are asking me to teach them how to trade and I don't know if I really want to get into a big commitment, but what I'm thinking of is probably doing a weekly session for about a month or two. Um, and I'm going to charge. I'm going to charge, I'm thinking, $200, but it's not a check to me. It'll be a $200 check to the American Cancer Society or the American Society of Clinical Oncology, um, one of, two of my favorite cancer-related charities. Um, and so there'll be more about that coming soon. I don't do that for money, obviously, but at the same time, if people don't pay for something, I don't think they take it seriously. So I'm going to go in my top-down view. And a couple things I want you to see. Um, well, you'll see it more on the next slide than you will here. The top-down view works in stocks, indexes, industry groups. I like using it to look at relative performance of major indexes. I make sure my combo ranking is what I'm ranking on, and it tells me that with this view, the strength in the market were bonds, and NASDAQ, interestingly, the weakness were small caps, mid caps, gold, Russell, oil, short-term treasury pro shares. All right, that looks at a one-day and a five-day window. Um, a little bit for three weeks, but it's mostly a one-day window. If I open up and look at the S&P 500, and should open up a weekly chart. Perfect. 
Now, those who have been following me know I have my little thing called the magic line. That's going to be retired because it turns out John's PMC and the thing that I was using with the magic line are very similar, but there's more power in John's because of the divergences that I didn't really pick up. There's no histogram in the program that I worked with that I got from Chris Wilson. So that will be retired. Now, I am combining a lot of what I like in HGSI with John Signals. There will also be views under John Person that will be more typical of the views that he uses. And you'll have the ability to customize the views and we'll teach you how on how they work best for you. So let's just take a quick look at the indexes. It'll be quick. I don't think there's a whole lot of story here. Um, you know, you can't be overly bearish about this when you had all-time highs the day before. You've had multiple kahunas, which are bullish momentum coming in with this run up. Um, that said, I just kind of, kind of wonder, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of wonder, are we getting ourselves kind of back into the land of the boxes? And are we going to be living in this for a while? Um, I don't know. I'm not, I would love to see us because I'm at heart, I'm a bull. I'd love to see us break out and go to all time highs. I'm not unconvinced that we don't come back down here and test here. Now that move there is 2.4%. That's not even a very big move. Um, time will tell probably a little bit more because I didn't draw it appropriately. I think this market is um, best case going sideways. Well, let me say that. High road scenarios, we break out to new highs. I, I don't know what's going to propel us there. We still got the coronavirus to deal with. The Fed's probably not going to say they're going to lower more. The middle scenario is we're going to bounce around in this box. I kind of think that's the most likely. And the low road scenario is it turns out coronavirus is much, much worse than I expected, and it causes an economic slowdown worldwide. And then, you know, you've got to move down here that would be closer to 10% to go retest the 200-day moving average. That's my high, middle, and low road scenario. And the middle scenario just bounces around in here and then either breaks up or down. Um, that's how I have to look at the market. Two of those scenarios say I'm probably going down this week. Um, the only difference is how much. So I think this market's at risk of a slight pullback. As I look at this, I, you know, we got higher highs a little bit. Um, the PMC is, is sort of gone. Um, it's, it's a little bit negative. I just don't see a propulsion to go much higher here. That's the S&P, and that's only my opinion. Dow Jones Industrial looks very much the same way. And I would feel very much similar about that. Um, the NASDAQ composite. Ditto. The Russell should look the worst of the bunch. It's already pulled down into their 50. You know, that's a 3 or 4% correction if we get that on the S&P and NASDAQ. And at these levels, that's real money. Um, the dollar we already talked about being super strong. It was up near the the top of the list outperforming the VIX, a sign of, of, of the volatility of the market, also increased some on Friday, but it's down off of its peak. Um, that's a pretty big pullback, but this is where the VIX usually lives. And again, when the VIX rises, your portfolio shrinks. When the VIX falls, you want to jump in the market. So um, this is something to keep your eyes on. Now, gold and silver have been a safe haven often, but the rising dollar, gold's going sideways. Silver going sideways. And the disappointing thing is, because most of us old miners, not physical gold, is the miners have broken down. It'd be interesting to see. I mean, I mean let's just think about this. Um, We have a breakdown of the 50. We failed at the 17. Our PMC is decidedly negative. We had a kahuna and a mobile breakdown. Um, I, 
compare it to this prior low, which was similar, and the PMC is worse, I think this, this just shows the weakness in the miners. Second thing I look at is industry groups. Let's see if this even works today. I have 175, and I'm going to look at two-day force up. Hey, it worked today. Imagine that. What I want, what I'm going to include in my add-on is going to be when you look at this, now you could see by index how many new buys, new sells, and what percent of the index is in a buy or sell. So internet media is quite strong, and you could see 80% of the index is in a buy, and a little bit less than 20% are in a sell. That's a strong group. Let's take a look at some of these. Twitter. Gapped up on earnings. Um, I'm not a Twitterer. Um, they did have good earnings. It doesn't hurt when you have in the White House a, uh, a president that likes to tweet. Um, I have no edge here. The group is strong. You had a Bible gap up. Mobile breakup from a squeeze in Kahuna. Um, you know, if you want to play it, you've got some obvious stops. You got a 200 day moving average. You got the bottom of the Bible gap up. And you got a chandelier that's printing there as well. Not my kind of stock. I don't see a big edge. Facebook, I have a position here. And um, if I look at Facebook, it's pulled back into the 50. Um, you know, it's potentially playable here. I'd want to see a signal. <coughs> I worry about this group because of the scrutiny by the pub public. But you can't argue you've been in a huge uptrend. And if you look at quarterly earnings per share growth, you got a big spurt coming compared to the multiple. So Facebook looks very reasonable here. Google. Um, Google is strong. Google's pulled back a little bit here. Had a mobile breakout squeeze in Kahuna on Thursday. Held up well on Friday. In fact, on Friday, it was one of the rare stocks that finished up three, three bucks. Do I think Google breaks out here? Sure. Um, do I think it runs up? 100 points or so, perhaps. Looking at the weekly, you can see a very bullish candle with a huge bottoming tail there. So it's extended. It's a high base. It's higher risk. Um, I like Google here, or Alphabet as they call it now. I would like to like this stock, but I can't like this stock. I've, I've, I've lost money on this stock several times. It looks like it's breaking out. I'm a little bit concerned that the PMC is weakening. <laughs> IQ. All right, I go down until the index. Home builders look strong this week. No surprise, index, you know, with the interest rates holding low. Now, here was the time. Well, here is an early buy. And take a look at this. I could have used this as an example. Sideways market, bullish convergence on the PMC. A person buy signal comes with a mobile breakout and a squeeze. That would have been a buy signal number one for me. Another buy signal would have been here where I've been single my kahuna, a pocket pivot, mobile breakout squeeze. I'm already in a person uptrending buy signal and a breakout above the 50. Is it still viable? Yeah, probably still viable, but it's getting more risky. You had a Bible gap up. So that chandelier to me looks like a good place to put my stop. That might be too much risk for me. Are there others that look good? Lennar Corp. Um, again, look at the PMC. You got to buy them when they break out. So you had a lot of opportunities in here. Um, it's getting extended. You can see it's up near the top of the high jump. Pulte Group. Um, similar, but give you a pullback to the 17. Toll Brothers, every one of those stocks I showed you, you find a stock that's going sideways and you wait and it, and it squeezes and it breaks out and you get the bullish convergence of the PMC. These are all broken out, so you're chasing them. That's not to say you can't make money on them. And if you're holding them, you just got to know when to fold them. And I wouldn't fold them just yet. So don't see anything here that's a perfect setup, but I can see interest in the home builders. The generics, um, don't know anything about Elgin except it's in a takeout. So that sort of kills my analysis. So I skipped that. I know that I think the news was they offloaded some assets. Teva, 
Um, today, I'm not sure I see a whole lot, but you have between these two buy signals and a pullback, you got a much higher PMC. You had a buy signal there coming in on multiple reasons. I'm not in Teva. That might be one to look at. Momentum's already gone too far. Perigo. I mean, you'd be buying off a high base. I'd much rather have bought it here. And gee whiz, what a shocker. Got a mobile breakout from a squeeze. We got a person buy signal, Kahuna, and we've got bullish convergence on the PMC. Too late, it's gone. You got to find those stocks when they're happening. And that's what I try and do. Educational services, the group that I seem to lose money on every time I try and trade. Um, Tal has had a nice run. Do you see an edge to buy it there today? No, it's an extended stock. Um, GSX, I wish I owned this one. And G, I mean, the time to buy was probably here. Hard to see it, but there probably is some bullish convergence here. You were negative here, going to positive, but you had a mobile breakout from a squeeze off the 50, a PSA reversal and a kahuna. Um, I don't do a lot of IPOs, so I would have missed it. Uh, plenty of volume. New Orleans, nice high, nice tight run up. Um, I just don't see a, an edge to buy it here. This would have been a nice time using our traditional kahunas mobile breakout from a squeeze. It wasn't a person buy, not really much um, on the PMC to give us a signal. Grand Canyon, nope. So I go through the top 10 of these, and I'm because we're going so long, I'm probably going to stop in a second and go on to something else. These are diversified banks. Um, look how Deutsche Bank, Deutsche Bank was left for dead, okay? I thought, and then what happens here? Kahuna, person buys signal the day before, Bible gap up, mobile breakout, and off and running. And oh yeah, look at the PMC. Incorporating that PMC may be the most important thing on this add-on. And I'll show you some of that in a few minutes. Bank of America, the banks kind of look like this. Pull back into the 50, um, may turn out to be a good time to buy. I have a fairly substantial position from the old last recession bear market and I'm holding on to it. Of course, I bought some puts. Citigroup looks the same. So I could go through the top 10 groups um, I could look at two-day momentum to the downside, and you could see you went from a small number of groups to 47. Let's look at semiconductor devices, for example. Marvell Tech. So I'm still, I'm not nearly as good as using these tools to the downside. We've been in a bull market since 2009 for 10 years. I haven't had a whole lot of opportunities of going student body left and shorting everything. Um, I'm going to get sharpening up my tools. So I probably could have looked at this and said, gee, what happened right here? I've got a person sell signal. I've got a kahuna. And I've got a PMC divergence. That would have been a great sim to look for. All right, so maybe I'm going to have to start finding those and building a scan for that. Maybe we already have. Qualcomm. Double top, rolls over here, PMC, pause, or negative divergence. Huh. Maybe it works to the downside too. You got to be kind of at double tops, double bottoms to really show that. So obviously you see a lot of red bars above the, the indicators. These have been big growth, big winners. It should be whether they're pulling back. Um, as always, I like to review. I said my performance, so I'm going to go there. Again, you have to ignore these numbers because I take money out all the time. Only one number should matter 
when you look at a trader's performance. What do they start the year with? And after I paid my taxes, it was about 1.7. What do I have P&L for the year? Whoops, not that one. I had that. 568. So if I started the year with 1.7 million, and I've got the calculator here because I used to be able to do this in my head, I got 560, I'll call it 9,000, into 1.7 million times 100, means I'm up 33.47% year to date. Um, I have another account that's up as well, um, but I'm not even gonna add that because then I'd have to go pull that up to show you. I still have too many positions. Um, since I'm here, let's look at Shopify because I mentioned that earlier. I've got Shopify, I've been, made a lot of money on it. I've done my roll up and out of my calls, so I've already banked a lot of money. I highly suggest you go look at that. That's something that will include in my education. Um, but let's take a look at Shopify right now. All right, I don't have enough years to be seasonality, all right. So here's Shopify, big run up. Certainly looks like it's going sideways now. Um, the person, the PMC really isn't doing much. It's going sideways as well. We've got earnings coming out. Earnings are in a couple days. You can see the run we've had off the low. So I was hoping that I'd have some seasonality to give me a clue. Let me just open up Magenta and see if I have it there. I uh, don't really want to close this, but I think I have to. So let me just do it this way. Actually, I'll use, I'm use Magenta. I know that for Dr. K's seasonality, he requires 12 years. Um, and there's not 12 years in there. Now, Shopify does e-commerce for people that don't want to use Amazon. And you can see just a huge run. Let's see what happens if I do a 30-day scanner. There's not going to be enough time. It's a too new of a stock. Yeah. So we're not going to get any seasonality on Shopify. So what I'm probably going to do on Shopify is seriously think about selling half my position and then either letting the last half ride or perhaps sell some premium to mitigate some of my losses, potential. Um, how much is Mark, how much is it going to move? If I go into here and I look at it's this week. Wow. As much as a $47 move one way or the other on Shopify. Now $47 on 478 is about 10 percent move that's what the uh market makers are projecting <coughs> all right what else do i want to do oh yeah let me show you the new toy for those that have trade station if you have persons indicators you will always have some value that you don't get in HGSI. HGSI does not go below daily. HGSI does not connect to a broker. HGSI can bring up real-time quotes, kind of, sort of. It's not a real-time platform. And HGSI will not have all the indicators set in there. Some are just too hard to program in HGSI. One of the strengths or the best part about TradeStation is the scanner. The problem with the scanner in TradeStation is it takes forever. Um, and when you start to combine 
a lot of different things, it has a tendency of getting errors and shutting itself down. Yes, John likes to give me a hard time about that because if I just did his stuff, it doesn't shut down. But I include a lot of other things that I like to use as well. So imagine if I could take this and do it in three to five minutes instead of doing it in two hours. What will that do with my quality of life? So if I just go up here to all securities, now this is not a bullish week. I'm not going to find a thousand things to buy doing this. And I go into John Person. Most of this will be in the indicator set that we have. Um, I can look at signal one. This is all securities. And I got to change the name here because I messed it and new buys. So these are all securities of two and a half dollars and 250,000 with a new PPS buy. There are 82 of them. I've ranked them in the view with a two day force up that I added. And what I'm doing on the ranking is I'm giving a buy signal heavyweight a weekly high close doji gets heavy weight on the last bar. I'm giving some force. I'm giving some index. The more buys in the index that happened today or already there. And then some weight on the market catcher, the higher relative strength. I'm probably going to do this too. I'm going to add on the PMC. This is I'm, I'm playing with this. I, this this won't be in what you get. Ascending. I'm gonna put the PMC eh, no, but I thought it would give me a choice of the colors. I'm gonna pull that for a second. All right. So I'm ranking it by momentum and some of John's signals. And these are the ones that come to the top. So I would expect to look at these by definition, all them to have a new person buy signal. Doesn't mean they're good things to buy and there's still too many to look at for most people, but we can go, well, that didn't have that. Let me try this again. I have to double click here. 82 and make sure I got the same. All right. Next one is Palti Group. New buy signal. BCE. All right. So this is interesting. BCE has gone sideways. I've got a MOBO breakout, a pocket pivot in the Kahuna, and a new person buy signal came in. It pays a 4.9% dividend, and look at the strength in the PMC. Wow, that might be something I might want to consider. KB Home. So you can go through these looking at them, or we can look at what's next. Person buy near weekly support. So I don't have weekly support on this, but the, that's a buyout, so I don't care. I don't like the PMC. These are some bond funds. All right. Person daily buy while you're in a weekly PBS buy. We're down to 61. Um, let's look at Amazon here. So we have a breakout of Amazon. We got a new person buy signal. We've got PMCs higher. Um, and we have a weekly high close doji with the last two weeks with that doji bar there. All right. So I might find things I like here. Moderna is one that I was interested in. And look at Moderna. All right. Price is kind of sideways. And PMC is getting better and better. I had a new buy signal, mobile breakout from a squeeze and a kahuna. Is that not the kind of thing that we liked that I showed you in the beginning? All right. Those are 63. How about, I'm still working on the daily trilogy scan. It's not ready yet, but this should be finding super, super strong stocks. It'll be coming out, but I'm going to continue to refine it. How about new high closed OG dailies? How about a daily high closed doji and a PBS buy. Um, that might be interesting. Let's look at MoneyGram International. Don't know what's going on there. Um, again, if you believe this stuff, it doesn't really work on the weekly here. It's not 
the PMC is not helping me, but I got a daily buy, sideways stock, PMC is clearly higher. I just don't see the enough momentum. I'd rather be above the 200-day moving average. All right, now we're talking. Is this not the exact same type of slide I showed you in the beginning? Are we in an uptrend? Absolutely yes. Did we pull back to support? Absolutely yes. In this period of sideways move in the stock, what did the PMC do? Much improved. Then I got a person buy a mobile breakout from a squeeze. Americold Trust. That looks interesting. All right. Number seven. Person weekly buy. Not a, there's 104. Person new HCDs. 190. We have, we're over filtering those or under filtering because in TradeStation, they won't give you two in a row. Once you get one, it negates the second. We haven't negated it. It's still a high closed doji. Um, how about a high closed doji with a new buy signal within two days? This is a, a type of a trade that I've been making money on for. This is my this is my trade. Let's look at Boeing. So it's got to have a weekly high closed doji, which means in a downtrend, you had a doji and within three bars, you closed above the high of the doji. So we clearly had a high closed doji. Check the box. Then it says I had to have a person buy signal within the last two. Did I do two? I thought it was two bars, but it looks like I gave three. So here's your buy. A kahuna, a mobile breakout from a squeeze. And look at your PMC. Is it time to get long Boeing? I don't give stock advice. I just show you how to use the tools. So this should find some very attractive stocks. And then if you start combining them all, you over filter, you won't find any winners. We have similar scans. So you will get with the product. You will get a person one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And you will get additional ones when I'm comfortable with them. How about a daily buy where the PMC is outperforming? That means the PMC has crossed the magic line. It's above zero. Right, well, it turns out this would be an interesting looking stock right here, Columbia property trust. I think we looked at it once already. Um, how about a sell? If we go to the bearish side, you'll have similar equivalents. You had 237 downside. What about sell signal within 5% of a 52 week high? There were 237 of them. Now I might want to combine that with a weakening or lagging PMC indicator and then see if I can find some things that would be attractive. It's a great tool. I can't wait for you to get it. And I like to end up on my buy watch list. So let's just do that. And do you notice anything, folks? Yeah, there's not, I did not find a whole lot of things that I wanted to buy. Let me just, and you notice also in my view here, you can see PBS buy, the last signal. We'll talk about restoration hardware in a second because I don't buy everything on this list. This is the weekly. This is today or the last trading day. This is the current signal. How many days the signal has been there? High closed OG, low closed OGs. What percent of their index is a buy or sell and the PMC market catcher condition? How much information is there? That is a ton. Let's look at, for example, can't buy this before me. That's a, I mean, a promise. Coharis. What do I see here? I see a sideways moving stock, clearly basing. A squeeze. I had a mobile breakout a couple days ago. I had a kahuna on Friday. And I have a PMC, a person buy signal earlier in the week. 
and my PMC during this period of time has gone from negative to positive. To me, that looks very interesting. Uh, it did cross the magic line on the weekly, but we're retiring that as well. Um, so the Coharis looked interesting. Anilin Pharma also looks interesting. Sideways move pulled to the 50. Um, notice the uh, PMC is becoming less negative. Um, higher base, higher risk. To you, um, I'm not sure, but this looked interesting here. Um, I'm trying to convince myself that this is getting better. And I guess if I compare it to this low here, it's probably about the same. So I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I buy that one yet. Heiko, another one. I don't think there's any question that the PMC, you go to back here to here, PMC is improving. You got a new person buy signal. Came in back here though, but it hasn't moved that much out of a squeeze. That looked interesting. Um, restoration hardware, not now, not yet. I'm just starting to watch it. And I'd like to see what it does. Its earnings are not until um, March. So you've got a little bit of time. So this is one I'm watching right now. It's sort of setting up in a... About one of these. So I got to wait to see what it does. But I have a feeling it's going to break to the upside. So I want to watch it. And Signet Jewelers, again, not something I want to tell you to go out and buy. PMC is moving up. Um, it pays a huge dividend. It's under demand. Um, this stock, to me, feels like it's turning around after it took a major dump. They own a lot of mall store jewelry shops. That's kind of why it took a major dump. Um, so what am I going to do with all of these? And I'm going to go back to Trade Station and Thinkorswim, and then I'm going to finish. In Trade Station, they go into my, I watch them during the day here, but more importantly, I put them into the Trade Station trading platform so I can monitor for new signals, looking at my Q signals, my HGSI signals, and my person signals. Now, what I'm going to do in, very quickly, I'm going to go into Go to Market Watch, import my Buy Watch. That was last week's. Okay. All right. This cannot be my buy watch. Hold on a second. Not that big. Did I bring the... Oh, wait. Try this again. 2-9. Replace... Okay. There we go. So I want to point out something from Dr. K. Dr. K has created, that can now be implemented in Thinkorswim, a seasonality scanner. If you see a one here, that means either in 20 days, 40 days, or in 60 days, there's at least an 8% move. If I go and I look at something like Signet Jewelers, And that doesn't look that good yet. Let me go back and see one that might look better. Well, none of these look great short term. Let me go down here and see if I got a winner. In the NASDAQ 100. Lululemon. So first thing is notice you have this white line here is his projected seasonality over the next several months. Okay. The blue line basically shows projected based upon where the stock is going. In the works, the watch list, 
he predicts a 10% move in 20 days, 21% in 40, and an 18% move over 60 days. How valuable to you would it be to be able to find those stocks that and show their plots within Thinkorswim without having to go to another program? I thought it would be valuable. I bought the product, and I'm, I'm going to have Dr. K do a webinar soon for my followers and for HGSI users because I think that this is a wonderful tool that allows us to put into every watch list, okay, every watch list that we might have. Uh, let's just pick something that uh, public list and be able to look in that watch list and identify which stocks in that watch list have a very good short-term and intermediate-term seasonality. Let's look at this one, AIG. I didn't make any of my watch list. What happened? AIG's got very strong seasonality. And then I would combine that with some of my other indicators. Look at what PMC is doing. It's sitting in a squeeze. Um, this is interesting looking. So I can either scan from the bottom and look at chart after chart, or I can start using tools like this to help drive me towards instruments that have an outsized move coming. On that note, I want to say goodbye, have a great week, and um, look for a note about upcoming webinar. Thanks, everybody. And thanks to John Person for letting us put his add-on paid add-on into HGSI. Goodbye.